So last night was all sorts of fun. I got in, um, and by about nine o'clock I had eaten and I was ready to go to sleep only to be woken up about 20, 30 minutes later by a big storm coming in. We're talking lightning, wind enough to like shake the tent and wake me up and a good amount of rain too. So that was fun. And then this morning, the ATV traffic started around 5.30 or so. Pretty sure it's the elk hunters. Unfortunately, it looks like despite my best attempts to conserve, I am going to run out of food-ish. Might just squeak by. Unfortunately, it is hard to conserve when I'm doing 12 plus hour days and all the hills and everything. Uh, by the time I get to camp at night, I am really hungry because I stop eating, you know, the last hour or two just to try and save a couple of extra bars for the next day. It's it's really hard to fine tune this stuff because hunger goes up and down. Um, and again, I had that bad water carry leaving Rollins, so I went. So I tried to err on the side of lighter because I was worried about making it through that with uh, a gallon plus of water on my back. I have had things like this happen before, and sometimes you get lucky and you run into somebody back here who has extra food. I do, however, have enough coffee to last me through half of Colorado still. I carried a little extra water last night since I had a couple of hours past that last water source. And uh, I think I'm still uh, mentally wanting more water just after the whole Great Basin thing. Uh, so I ended up taking the luxury of a third cup of coffee this morning for the first time in weeks. Once I get moving, I'm usually wishing that I had gotten out and gotten moving a little earlier, but I do enjoy my tent time. So I do have a little bit of flexibility when it comes into a steamboat. Uh, the place I had actually wanted to hitch in was Muddy Pass, just because it sounded like it was going to be easier to get a ride there. And that is 57 miles from camp today. Uh, so that would mean uh, basically getting there Sunday sometime. Unfortunately, I'm, again, a little light on food. So I could try and hitch in earlier. But <clears throat> I'm also just aware that there can be issues getting back to the trailhead. So, yeah, for example, people going into Pinedale, the hitch into Pinedale, not so bad. I heard some people had some trouble getting back out to a trailhead because less people going out that way. And while I have seen a good number of people who will uh, hitch into town from the nearer trailhead and then return to the further trailhead, I'm just not willing to do that. I am hoping to <clears throat> be able to maintain my 25 mile or 25 mile a day pace. <clears throat> uh, though I am going to get into more climbs in altitude here. The trail in about 27 miles gets nearly up to 12,000 feet. Now altitude makes it a little uh, harder to exert, obviously, makes it harder to breathe, etc. However, if it is well graded trail like in the Sierra, I tend to do pretty well on that. Uh, Jen will curse about the climbs in the Sierra, you know, where you're going 4,000 feet up or whatever it is. But if it's a well-graded pass, I tend to beat her up that by quite a bit. Better on my knees, and at that point, it's just muscle and hitting a nice, even uh, pace. As usual, I'm not overly familiar with the trail ahead of me. Uh, I do know that a good chunk of Colorado overlaps with the Colorado Trail. And everything I hear about that section slash the Colorado Trail is it's very well maintained and pretty easy hiking. So I have that to look forward to at least. There are all sorts of hunter camps back here, finding fire rings and everything. Unfortunately, a lot of them seem to have dead trees in the vicinity to the point where I wouldn't camp there. People do get uh, killed by that. I think I just saw something a couple of weeks ago about another fatality. And that's one of the funny things about backpacking. People uh, will act like bears are out to kill them and yet uh, ignore stuff like widowmakers right above where they set up their tent. Shame about the haze. I love running into people who are excited about the fact I'm doing such a big hike or they've like always dreamed about doing it and they're interested. It's just so much fun being enthusiastic. So per those guys, they unfortunately did not have any extra food on them because they're just doing day excursions, but uh, they said that the weather's gonna be just like this for the next little while. So 
clear and uh, hazy. Well, that's fun. <laughs> Looks like that Morgan Creek fire a couple of years did some damage, took out the bridge. There was a sign back there that said bridge out. I didn't realize that referred to this. So there are actually attention icons in this section, but they're old. They refer back to a fire closure a couple of years ago. And then some important detail like, oh, hey, watch it, or you're gonna hit a bridge that's out in a bunch of blowdowns is buried in comments that I didn't happen to look at till I got here. Nothing like a bonus mile and a half in the middle of the day. So I could have uh, tried to cross the river and just kept going, but it seemed kind of obvious that section of trail had been abandoned, at least for now. And there is a detour note on the southern side, so trying to do the right thing here. Yeah, oh well, it's just an extra mile and a half today. So there is a campground here, and apparently the camp post is very friendly to hikers. However, it is kind of late in the day and I haven't made quite as much progress as I want. And if I'm gonna keep my pace up and make it to Steamboat, I gotta make miles today. Gotta climb about 2,500 feet. Get to be up on the ridge line of Lost Ranger Peak probably early tomorrow. I've got about eight more miles till I've hit my 25. This is more like it. So far, it's been my style climbing, gradual and long. Starting to feel like I'm in the mountains. It was nice. Local guy seems to work on some of the trails. Knew a lot of the trails uh, around where the CDT goes, not just the CDT. Every time somebody waves or me or stops or says hi, I really hope that they're just gonna say, here, I have this ice cold Gatorade, this soda. See, I got spoiled by all the trail magic on the AT. Now I can't help but think that every time I'm close to a road. And this is the time of day I start regretting my setbacks. I really need to make another mile or two. It's starting to get cold up here. I'm trying to fill up for the night since it's going to be dark in less than an hour. Unfortunately, this uh, filter kind of had a number done on it by Wyoming. I really need to replace it, but I don't know when I'm going to have a chance. All set for water for the night, but uh, looks like campsites might be a little more challenging than I anticipated. None near any of the water sources for the local rules. I've seen a lot of people off in the bushes. So I think I'm gonna have to set up in the first one I find now. Well, damn, dead trees everywhere. And I'm not finding anything usable as a campsite. Okay, 820 and this isn't really my ideal campsite, but only thing I found that was workable, and uh, I'm ready to stop. Home sweet home for the night.